Hi there, in this video we're going to get nerdy with markers, show you what a clip marker is versus a sequence marker, we're going to add details, look at this, oh we can write in it, and look at this, fancy in and outs, we can color code them, a bunch of shortcuts, alright let's get in and learn about markers. Alright first thing let's go back to my, uh, I'm going back to another workspace, go to editing, or I've got one that I created earlier, and let's bring in a couple of files, double click to import, okay it's an exercise files called markers, bring in everything in here. Now we don't have a sequence to start from and we need a portrait version anyway. So let's go to new sequence. Let's use the red 1080p, uh, 25 frames per second. I'm gonna call this one my break dancing. Okay. And the sequence is the wrong format. Like there's no portrait defaults. We'll create some when we get onto social media in a bit, but most portrait is just uh, the normal kind of ratio turned up on its side. So I'm gonna go to my sequence settings and just inverse these. Okay, so it's gonna be 1080 by 920. Not always, but that's kind of what we want. Breakdancing, I have sequence one. Where did I get that from? No idea. Oh, it, uh, no, I have no idea what got sequence one. <laughs> All right, so I've got this. Let's add a couple of uh, images. Doesn't really matter, grab four. Okay, um, there's no, it doesn't really matter for markers if we're using uh, images or videos. Now, the brief overview for markers is at a marker, you've got two kinds of markers, right? I'm gonna my backslash so I can see it all. So you got two kinds of markers. You got the, I've got nothing selected, sequence marker. Can you see it appears up there? Okay, if I undo that, if I have something selected, I hit M, it's on the clip. The difference is, is that the markers on the clips come along for the right. The ones that are in the timeline, nothing selected, M, K will stay there, doesn't matter like what we have moved. So there's different use cases for both, okay? Um, if you need a change or you need to note something within this video, no matter where it is, or maybe it's timing like the first 30 seconds needs to be like, say you've got an ad and the first say three seconds or five seconds is forced watching like on YouTube. The other stuff is optional. A lot of the time you'll set a marker at say three seconds, three zero zero and hit Make sure nothing is selected, hit M, and at least now you know that's your, uh, you know, that's your above the fold before people look, can hit the skip this ad. Okay, so we've got two kinds of markers. Double clicking markers gets you a whole lot more information. So any of them, double click them, you get this big marker window. Okay, and in here we can give the marker a name, which is interesting. Okay, so let's give this one, let's say this above the fold, I still call it above the fold, even though it's definitely got a name, I can't think of it at the moment, but kind of above the folder, okay? So I need to have all my kind of call to action before then, at least the most compelling part of my ad before here. You can add comments, okay? We can obviously color them, okay? Let's color our different ones. You might be using them as, well, I'll show you a really cool little thing you can do, is let's, change the duration. At the moment there's zero duration. That's why it's just like this little, um, you know, this little shield here. But if I extend it out any sort of time, click OK, can you see you can actually start reading what's in there? So you can actually add markers of like maybe it's your sections in your video. Okay, you want to kind of identify the intro versus the outro, maybe sections where advertising, you know, where the advertising gets jammed in. Okay, so you, you have to open them up for that to be seen. Okay, you can leave them in there and people can go into them and have a look. So if I'm getting this from somebody else, I can open up the window markers panel, okay? And they can show me, look, there it is there. Okay, and I can add another one, remember M, okay? And I can double click it, go in, and let's say yellow stuff is the must change. Oh no, yellow is maybe. Let's say we've got a red, okay? And this needs to be a reshoot. Why? Because, I don't know, because of this thing. Okay, click okay. And again, if you wanna open them up, just drag out the out point. You can do that without dragging that out. There's a shortcut, so undo both dragging those out. You can hold down the option key on a Mac, alt key on a PC, I think, there you go. And you can just start dragging them out. So you don't actually have to go to the duration, just click on them and drag them out. So there you go. Hold option on a Mac, alt key on a PC, and just click them once actually, and that'll just turn them into that like two segmenty thing. You drag them out. The problem with these comments I find is if I zoom out, can you see they get smaller? <laughs> <laughs> and if I zoom in, they become unreadable. So it, it's a way. I'll often use really simple markup like this. Uh, if I'm sending it to another editor, if there's just simple changes, add the good stuff inside of here rather than up here. OK, 
Okay, and they can kind of open this panel and check it out. They can filter by all the red ones, maybe to do first. Okay, the green ones, good job, editor. You've done a great job here. Okay, but the yellow ones and the red ones, okay, they can turn it on and off. <laughs> you get the idea. What do I use them for? A lot for is where I, like I'll do a lot of the recording and rough drafts. I'll add markers to show like what my thought was here because I'm not doing the final edit or maybe, you know, I've shot the B-roll separately and I want the editor to go through and actually insert it in here. I'm like, here's where this video goes and this is what I was thinking and I can add my details in here. Um, shortcuts for using markers. Let's say you've got a few of them. Okay, uh, let's go M, M. Okay, to get back and forward with them, it's, let's say at the beginning here, uh, Shift M. Okay, M's to add one and Shift M is to toggle, just keeps jumping through them all. Can you see it's jumped to this one down in this um, clip here? So Shift M just kind of moves along. Uh, it's Command Shift M on a Mac, Control Shift M to go backwards. I never remember that. Um, we've shortcut it out by now, you probably are too. Let's go to Button Editor and in here, go to In. <laughs> it's one of these. Clear in and out, mark, oh, come on, Dan. Add marker, I use these two. So you can drag these two down. There we go, you, and go to previous. We'll put them just behind there. All right, click OK. I'm totally running out of space. Let's go to my bins. Which ones, shortcuts do I not use? Don't use you, don't use you. See these little weird little spaces? You can use little spaces just to like separate things. It's not really a space. We've talked about this before probably. And um, so there's that one. Did I get the other one on there? Let's click OK. See the space ends up being just a air gap. Okay, so I've got my go to next marker and my go back next one. All right, come on, Dan. Uh, one last thing with markers is you can select in your timeline. Okay, make sure in there. Remember we can do find over here in my uh, program. Uh, so my project panel, where's my project panel now? It's down here, there you go. I can do a find in there if that's selected, but if I'm a member, if the blue line is highlighted around my timeline and I hit find, which is a shortcut, is Command F on a Mac, Control F on a PC. There's actually, if you've got lots of markers, you can actually switch this to markers that contain the word reshoot. Dun, 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 and it should jump to it. There you go. Okay, that's not the last thing. And the other thing was, when you are selecting all of these things and copying and pasting things, uh, by default, the markers only stay on this sequence. They don't come along because uh, they're specific for a sequence. You can turn that on under markers. You can say, actually, when copy and paste is done, include the sequence markers. Okay, the next, next last one is, yeah, there's actually a couple. I should look at my notes better before I say, and the last one, okay, then the second to last one is this ripple sequence markers. Uh, so there are times where you need, at the moment, remember this one here that said, uh, please, you know, this one needs to be at three seconds because that's where, um, you know, the unskippable part of the ad is. So that needs to stay there. But by default, which is if I click this and hold Option Delete on my Mac, Alt Delete on a PC to ripple delete, watch what happens to this marker. It gets kind of deleted and moved along, okay, because all of these are rippling. You might not want that. Okay, so you can say Sequence, uh, sorry, Markers, Ripple Sequence Markers, turn that off. Now when I delete it, watch what happens up the top here. These guys should stay in place. Okay, so you can turn it on and off as you need. There might be times where you need one or the other. And the other one I'm gonna talk about mainly is, just real quickly, is you can actually turn these into stamps for YouTube um, to go out into your, you know how you get in some YouTube videos, you can kind of like have the time codes. Okay, there's a way of exporting these out. Um, I will include that bit further on in the course uh, where you're looking at YouTube. So look for YouTube videos ahead of here. There'll be one that has something to do with, um, I haven't named it yet because I haven't made it, but um, it'll be something to YouTube, chapter markers, something like that is what I'll call it. Sorry, that's the future. I haven't, <laughs> haven't recorded that one yet, but uh, I'll explain it better in there, but know that you can. So I'll tie it here with a markers video. All right, let's do another marker video next.